And I'm Steve. And welcome to another fabulous 15 minutes. And we're here at the Getaway Travel Expo. That's right. We're going to take you on a journey from plane to train. And ideally we mine ourselves. <laughs> yes. So keep watching. Get away. Sensational Singapore for the new millennium. We're really celebrating in a big way. Euh, il y a de nombreuses raisons pour que vous veniez en France. La France est un pays magnifique avec beaucoup de variété. I just say that there are plenty of reasons to visit France. Benvenuti in Italia e divertitevi con il fantastico cibo italiano. I'm here with Storol from the Getaway Show, and you've been talking at nauseam all afternoon, giving me lots of advice about what to do and where to go. All the hot tips. More what to do, not what you shouldn't do. Okay. Um, what have you found? Just about anything. <laughs> for example, what sort of advice have you giving this afternoon? Oh, just go for it. Just follow your dreams. If you really want to go somewhere, you should just pursue it at all costs. <laughs> and no, I mean, you know, a lot of people ask, oh, you know what, is it safe enough here to travel? Is it, I mean, everywhere has its downside, that's for sure. Um, you know, Australia doesn't always come across as being that safe. If you were a tourist down in Port Arthur a few years ago, you'd You'd know about that, wouldn't you? So we had some of those backpacking problems as well. People getting hitchhiking. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I've spent most of my life, I'm not going to say how many years because I give away my age, <laughs> but I've spent a great deal of my life travelling on my own too. Um, and as a single woman, if you pick the right pick the right country, a country that's responsive to, to women travelling on their own, you're laughing. Otherwise, it's easy enough just to team up with other people with, that you meet on the road. I was about to say that, I've been travelling on my own and that's the best way to meet the best It is, it's fantastic. And a woman is um, not, I don't think, vulnerable. I think you're far more approachable. People sort of see you and they go, oh, I wonder what she's doing on her own. Go on. And they welcome you into their homes and into their lives and it's a beautiful way to travel. For sure. Now, you've been to 101 places around the world, but more than that, um, what's the next big destination for you that you're really looking forward to seeing? Uh, the Arctic. Yeah, I've been south, so I'm heading north this next year. Um, play with the polar bears, do a bit of sea kayaking. Yep, it should be beautiful. So, what about for the turn of the century, for the millennium? Where's the place to be? Where are you recommending everybody go? Okay, the place to be for the new millennium, definitely South America. It's going to go off. Train is one way to travel. I'm just looking, white line, white line, white line, white line. I don't see any cows yet, but uh, I'm hoping I'm going to see one tree. Tree. Car, cow, it's got to be, got to be a cow somewhere. Oh, there she is, Jacqueline. What are you up to? I'm here with Mondana, and I'm whispering for a very good reason. There's a bit of a very, very serious mystic palm reading going on just to my right, and we actually interrupted and upset the guru. So we're going to um, forge your head, and I'm about to get a, uh, a henna tattoo happening. Here we go. How are you? Thank you. Now, exactly what is henna made of? It's a plant leaf powder. Yeah. And uh, how long does it last? Like, is it, it's obviously not poisonous. No, it lasts for seven to ten days and it usually fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It lasts for how long? Seven to ten days. Oh, right, I thought you said years. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, go ahead. <laughs> so, you're going to do a bit of a, um, a henna tattoo for me today? Yeah. And uh, what, what sort of designs can you choose from? Uh, you choose any design in any part of body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll just stick something safe. I won't go for my face, maybe my hand. Mm -hmm. And what design do you think you're going to choose for me today? Flower. And what does that um, signify? Just happiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. A nice auspicious mm -hmm. and good luck. Fantastic. Can't have enough of that then, can you? David here. Now, you've travelled pretty extensively over the couple of years. What do you recommend for jet lag? Uh, alcohol. Alcohol, that's the trick? Everyone will tell you that uh, to avoid jet lag, don't drink on the plane. 
you're going to get jet lag anyway. So you may as well have fun, fun on the plane and have your drinks. I've never been able to get over it, so it's, it's weird. This year I've been to Europe twice. The first time I came back I had jet lag for about 10 days. I was waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and couldn't get back to sleep. The second time I came back I didn't have jet lag at all, so it's, it's just bizarre. It's random, I think. Now how hard is it to travel constantly? Initially it was quite difficult, but uh, now I've been doing it for about five years, I'm quite used to it, so... What modest, old pro, five years down there, said every country, what would you recommend as one of the favourites? Well, my favourite place is uh, London. I love big cities because there's so much to do, you know, you're just surrounded by activities. But it, each destination is different for different reasons. If you want to go and lie on the beach, you know, there are great beaches. But Australia's the best place. Every time I come home... From no the... place like home? That's right, every time I come home from anywhere, I'm always uh, reminded that nothing, nowhere is as good as Australia. Have you ever had a culture shock? Yeah, you know, I often get culture shock in third world countries. Often wonder how these countries survive. You know, with a raw open sewerage and no money and poverty, it's just... So how hard is that? Like, you've come to a country, you've just had the biggest culture shock, what am I doing here? And you've got to just perform on camera and go, <gasps> we're having a great time here. Well, I try to be as honest as possible. The thing about those kind of countries is it's always interesting to see the culture yeah. and also for travellers from Australia it's always cheap so that's the angle you know that's that, that's the thing. I'm here with Sarah and Sarah has come to the Getaway Travel Expo for some answers and um, I'm just wondering with the uh, literature you've got there whether you've actually got answers or whether you're completely confused. Yeah I think I'm probably more confused than anything because there's so many different places I'd like to go and it's just too hard to make a decision. And so what are the options for you today? Well, I'm looking maybe South America, maybe somewhere in Indonesia, I'd like Africa, basically places you can do something, mm -hmm. do something active. Fantastic, so I can take you to really not up your alley then? No, no, I'd like to rather get out there and do something myself, travel around, hike, swim, snorkel, dive, whatever. There's a limit of five. <laughs> if you're looking for a great holiday, then I think Croatia would be a fantastic destination, but you certainly wouldn't want to be hanging around your hotel room looking for a bit of entertainment. Welcome to Croatia. We're waiting for you. Here I am in... Uh Turkey and I've got uh, my Turkish delight here, Nesna. What's the attraction of Turkey? Attraction of Turkey is its history, um, Anzacs naturally, and just uh, the cuisine, but generally it's history. That's what a lot of people come for because we have 10,000 years of history. What about the uh, Turkish belly dancers? Uh, yeah, that as well. That, we do have a lot of nights where people want to see that, but generally it's history that people come for. Tropical North Queensland, there's lots of things to do in Tropical North Queensland. There is. One of them, uh, favourite pastime, is basically golfing. And you're great golf courses with the old cane toad and a bit of right. hand. And uh, what else can you do in Tropical North Queensland? Yeah, you can go out to the Great Barrier Reef. And yes. You can do that in different forms. You mm -hmm. can go out there and do a day, or you can do five days. You can stay out there. Mm -hmm. You can go up to Lizard Island, which is further out, or near and the island. always make sure you come back. They always make sure That's you come important. back. Yuck! These wild animals, I tell you, no wonder they're in the bush. It's happening here and uh, definitely Wet n' Wild is the place to be. What are we seeing here, Mark? Oh, Wet n' Wild Water World. It's the greatest theme park. In fact, it's one of three greatest theme parks, Movie World and Sea World as well. And how wet and how wild can you get? Oh, look, it's, it's almost crazier than this here now. Can you believe it? It's crazy. It's just got out of control. They're everywhere and everywhere over Europe. Probably the most cheapest alternative to accommodation. What does it stand for? Budget accommodation, good standards, you can meet people from around the world. So Youth Hostel Association is, um, is there a country that there isn't one? Well, well we've got them in 60 countries, so there are some that we haven't got hostels in, but we've got the world pretty much covered. Um, there are 2,500 in Europe, so we've got Europe pretty much covered. We've also got them in Asia, South America, there's 150 in Australia.
they were extinct, but no, we have spotted a Tassie tiger. And uh, I thought you had all died. That's a no. You're, um, your coat's looking a bit hard to wear. Have you got the famous spots? Turn around. Yes, as you see, the Tassie stripes. What happens when you pull the tail? Do you bite? Hold down. Here at the Getaway Travel Expo, looking for things to do for the millennium. I know exactly what I'm going to be wearing. Looking at treat, and I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get high, I'm going to go ballooning. What do you think? Dave thinks it's a good idea? Talk to me. Talk to me, Steve. Talk to me. What do you think? You going to go? Can come with me? Get the bucket? Go on. <laughs> crocodile Dundee in the wild, and this is the way you wrestle the crocodile, and you get them down, <laughs> and you've got, to, you've got to tangle them in the wire. So you're leaving the uh, Getaway Travel Expo? Yes, mm -hmm. almost. Oh, we had a great time. <laughs> Fantastic. Did you enjoy your trip? Lovely. Mm -hmm. We've been all around, so yeah. it's, it's really worthwhile seeing. It's good. Welcome to the Getaway Bus. The wheel of the bus go round and round. That was the Getaway Travel Show here at the Exhibition Buildings, and it was a fantastic event. We've whizzed around all day. I'm Pretty Bush. What about you, Steve? I'm ready for a big nap. And uh, we haven't exactly got five-star location, no. um, accommodation. A bit of a uh, happening tent, though, I'd say. Yes, it looks like rain, so we better get under cover. Catch you guys next time on Fabulous 15, 15 Minutes. Night. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
and everyone gets happy when he's when they're around him. I found a stray pet. So uh, where your abouts is your owner? Do you have an owner? I'm my owner. No, I'm feral, so I don't have an owner. Uh, so what are you doing running around the streets? Oh, I'm looking for people and I'm scratching them. So you're after an owner? Yeah, that's right. After an owner. With a lot of money. So what does a feral animal like you look for in an owner? Um, somebody, yeah, who takes care of me and has a lot of food that I can eat and has a lot of money to give me. My oh, oh, so more of a sugar daddy kind of, kind of guy. Yeah, that's right. Cool. We'll, we'll just uh, we'll look after this feral animal. Well, here's the first step to having a, a bare necessity of a a little animal. Don't scare the dog. I'm here in Ackland Street with Henry, and Henry doesn't have a pet with him. No dog. I've got a pet, my wife. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you've got a pet. That's your wife. <laughs> but you don't have a pet dog. No way. You don't seem to like pets much. No, 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 no. That cost too much to keep. Yep. Not a bloody nuisance. They crap all over the yards and on the sidewalks and people tell them to pick up a poo and they don't and you've got to walk in it. No, no. Right? And the cats, you go into a house with people with cats, it stinks. Hair, you, hair everywhere. You, oh, God, no. And then the poor cat gets sick. They've got to go to the vet. It costs them a hundred bucks. I reckon they'd buy me. Do you reckon your wife's cheaper to keep? Oh, yes, yes. And she supplies a lot. She supplies my food and all my pleasures. So what do you want bloody pets for? <laughs> You've got a maid. Have you got children? I've got children, yes. They're a bit of a pain. They're a bit messy and a bit expensive though, aren't they? What, children? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why I won't have any more. Here we are with another pet owner. And um, what's the name of your dog? Holly. And why did you call it Holly? Holly was part of her kennel name, it, and it was Holly Hawk, so we just took off the end of it and called her Holly. So what made you choose this dog? Well, we chose it for Jason because he's always wanted a dog, but we didn't want just a little tiny dog that didn't have any personality, so we decided we'd go down to the showgrounds and have a look at all the different breeds, and these were the most playful and loving and... That's why we chose it. So do you think dogs are reflective of their owners then? I think so. So you're kind of a playful, kind of wild child then? I think so, yeah. She's a real nutcase at times and I think, you know, that's a bit like all of us in our family at the minute. <laughs> that sort of says something about this kind of family. I can see. What, and what sort of things do you do with dog? Well, we like to, we're trying to socialise her at the minute, you see, get her used to everybody because she's only eight months old and this is um, one of the things we do because there's lots of people down here and we thought, well, we'd get her used to people. But we take her to the park and we run and... How do you get this one still? Here we go. Oh, it's shaking my paw. I think you're a crazy dog. You're a crazy dog. You're a very, very crazy dog. And I think it's giving me a bath. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the first thing you see. <laughs> oh, you like licking my ear, Dave. <laughs> you might be asking yourselves, what pets do Steve and Jacqueline have? Well, speaking for myself, I have a pet fish on my desk at work, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a goldfish, and it's called sushi, and I've had it for six months now. And um, I'm hoping that it won't end up as some of these fish have. Tell you what though, some days I get quite famished whilst I'm at work. And I tell you what, a little bit of a sauté in a fry pan, a little bit of olive oil, a bit of parsley, yummo. Well, my favourite pet is my pet rock. Because basically you get your rocks off, um, it's raw, it's uncut, and it's a great pet to have. It's dark or blonde. Cool and handsome. Bit of a scoop going down here in Ackland Street. Not a pooper scoop, just a scoop. With regard to the Monash University students being expelled, and we have a protest group here um, working wonders down here. Um, but the question on our lips is pets, and uh, whether you believe that uh, the qualities of the owner is actually reflective in the pet that's chosen. Do you think that's the case? Do you have a pet yourself? What sort of pet have you got? Dog, is that correct? We're behind you, behind you, behind you, behind you, 
you got to wonder about the intellect of the owner of that dog, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's got a very attractive butt, this dog. <laughs> give it a 10. <laughs> Playboy pet. Navanka. <laughs> I'm salivating at the moment here um, in front of these hordes and hordes of gorgeous cakes. They say that pets are uh, reflective of the qualities of their owners. Well, I think it's the same for cakes. And I think for me, it would definitely be the fruit tart, the strawberry tart, like any tart probably. <laughs> Hazelnut tart, coconut tart, bacon tart. You thought I was all tarted out, custard tart. He's a party animal and he loves to, um, uh, to play and um, uh, his, my husband says he drinks like me, which is very loud, <laughs> but um, he dangles his chain in, in the water bowl and I don't do that, so. Yeah. You don't dangle anything? Oh well, well I try not to and what he did have to dangle is no longer there, so I'm very sorry. <laughs> so do you think if your dog um, was not a social animal, you wouldn't have a lot of, uh, you wouldn't be able to relate to your dog at all? It would be really, it, no, it would be really, really hard because um, uh, if you didn't like to do the things we... We were considering uh, a Scotty dog and we read that they were quite aloof and kept to themselves quite a lot and we just wanted something that was a bit more gregarious. Not a snob. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's it for us. You've been watching the two non-blondes. And we've been talking pets, personalities and their owners. Ruff, ruff. Ruff. Ow.